Welcome to Good Libations, which is our show about mixology. I'm Ethel Andrews, and of course I'm a mixologist, and we have an intriguing show today because our show is going to be a tribute to New Orleans and the Gulf Coast because of what they have been through in recent times. And we have a family that we're going to be interviewing a couple of members of and introducing today. And I'm going to introduce each member one by one. First of all, this is Anthony, who is actually the son of Christy. And this is Gareth, who is actually the son of Carrie, who you'll be meeting. And this is Christy. And this is Carrie. And this is Marcia, who's the family matriarch. And again, we're going to be interviewing these two shortly, but this is the family. And we're going to take a brief break for a moment. We're going to bring on a couple of guests of the Trepanier family. First of all, we're going to talk to Marcia, who's the matriarch, so to speak, of this family, being that her grandmother is now deceased. And again, Marcia, um, your grandmother's heritage was unique and interesting. And we know that she was born in New Orleans, but how did she end up here in Southern California? Uh, she was kind of a bad girl, so she was running around with a gambler whose name was a number. And my great-grandmother brought her out on a train. I don't know to who, but uh, was going to leave her in California to get her out of trouble. And on that train, she met Ned Mandela. <laughs> who, of course, is your grandfather. Yes. And they subsequently, of course, got married and settled in L.A. Mm -hmm. And then they had your father, mm -hmm. Nerval Mandela. And again, uh, the picture of the lady um, here and uh, the gentleman, that's Ned Mandela and uh, Grandma Lee. And her, again, her maiden name was Trefonier. And in this photo here is Grandma Lee and her son, Nerval, who again is Marsha's father. And then, of course, we have a picture of the family as it is today and a picture of Christie's twin granddaughters, Michaela and Kirlin. But anyway, the one and only time um, I had thought that you went to New Orleans was in, in the 1980s, but actually you have been there in the 1960s, as yes. it turns out. And what did you see and experience at that point in time in the 60s? Uh, the family lived actually in the French Quarter. They had always lived there. They never left. Uh, they lived on the street that the um, parade for the Mardi Gras goes down, had <laughs> always lived there. As a child, I got lots of the little coins and the necklaces and loved that because that was wonderful toys. Of course. Uh huh. And um, my grandparent and my great grandparents, grandma's parents, were married in St. Louis Cathedral. As pictured in the center photo yes, there. And I have their marriage license. And um, I just think it's one of the most beautiful places on earth. And I agree with you, it's unique. Yes. Now, when you went in the 1980s, you again had an, an intriguing adventure there because you went with Grandma Lee. I remember you flew there. Yeah, it was um, my last aunt had died. So I went back to help her out with the arrangements and everything. But I actually learned a lot of our history from my grandma's friend that lived there. And she was driving us around, so. That would have been interesting. Yeah. And you know something, too, you always suspected and knew that your grandmother had Creole background, but because of society at that time, it wasn't talked about. The subject wasn't even broached, and she denied it, in mm -hmm. fact, if she was asked about it. But indisputably, you know now that you definitely have Creole background. Yes. Because a family friend basically did your family history and found out that a lot of the relatives were listed from Grandma Lee on back as mulatto or mixed ancestry. Mm -hmm. And one particular relative who was the progenitor, you might say, of that maternal side was a Matilda Smith from Virginia, and she was listed as black. Yes. So you guys all have that rich, interesting Creole background. Yes. Well, Marcia, I'm going to call up Carrie now. And she's going to tell us an interesting anecdote that she experienced about the family. Well, in the um, late 80s, when my uh, great aunt Jean passed away, oh, I'm sorry, Olga passed away, my mom and my grandma Lee went to New Orleans to um, take care of 
things. And when my mom said when they got off the plane, my grandmother went to the house, went right to a closet and slit open the seam of a coat and out fell three rings. And this is one of them. And it was so funny because my grandmother was very petite woman and I have very large fingers and this one fit me just absolutely fit me. So then I realized that I take after my uh, Aunt Olga. And it was just really interesting for me at about 16 years old to realize that I do actually fit the family. <laughs> it's in the DNA. And yeah. again, you know, you're Zoftig, as the saying goes. Yes. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And again, you can be proud that you have this rich, unique family heritage of French Creole. Yes. At any rate, thank you so much again for the interview, and we're going to take a short break. Welcome back to Good Libations. You know, the reason why we're doing this show is because of the events that have unfolded in the Gulf states and in particular New Orleans. We well, you know, first of all, there was Hurricane Katrina, which devastated New Orleans. All, certain neighborhoods and certain parishes were completely inundated with water. Whole neighborhoods and lifestyles were destroyed as a result. And it was really sad because, again, this is a city of close-knit neighborhoods, very close-knit families, as the Trepanier Navarro family is. So we feel that we want to make this a tribute to New Orleans. And we're doing this via the hurricane, which we know is a drink that is very famous in New Orleans. And it mostly is because of Pat O'Brien's. We know that Pat O'Brien specializes in making hurricanes and in fact apparently created the drink. And of course there's other drinks that New Orleans is famous for such as the New Orleans Fizz, the Sazerac, and also absinthe which was a liqueur that was banned for decades but has been allowed to be served again because of the toxic wor um, um, wormwood, which is the prime ingredient. They would not allow it to be served for a very long time. But anyway, that is the reason why we're doing this show, but out of love for the residents of New Orleans and the Gulf Coast. And many people here in Monrovia trace their roots back to the Gulf Coast and to Louisiana in particular. And like New Orleans, I think Monrovia um, represents the same type of diversity that they have there with multi-ethnic groups of people. And I think that's a real treasure in our community. But anyway, we're going to bring Brian Ohm up here at this particular time because he actually had a real adventure in New Orleans when he was a younger man. <laughs> he did some major partying there and we want to hear about that. Um, let's see, yeah, so it was about 22 years ago. Uh, I worked at an engineering company, so it was my first job out of college, and one of my best friends there had a sister that lived in New Orleans, so um, I think a lot of people that live in New Orleans actually try to kind of get out of the area when Mardi Gras hits because it's, it's just so insane. But uh, she basically was kind enough to let him bring friends down. So I got, it was about 22 years ago, I got my first taste of New Orleans at Mardi Gras time. So, it, you know, it's just completely insane. Um, I think it's a party <laughs> town anytime, but then when you throw Mardi Gras into it, you know, you get millions of people and it's just, it's, it's really crazy. But we had, a, we had a really great time and beautiful architecture, you know, around the craziness. Um, As great represented food, there. Great everything. So I had a great time. Because that is actually St. Louis Cathedral. That's yeah, that's right. And, and that's a beautiful place. In fact, again, that's where Marcia, Marcia's um, grandparents were married. So that's quite a thing to know. Beautiful. That's an architectural marvel, and there's a family connection with their family there as well. And also, in 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 addition to introducing you to a different libation, I understand that your palate was expanded <laughs> regarding cuisine yeah, when that, you were in New Orleans. That's that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it was pretty uh, up pretty much up until that time that I really avoided all spicy food. So I grew up um, in the countryside in Ohio, and so. Uh, flavorful spicy didn't really go together it's just more chili peppers and chili flakes and hot 
yellow peppers, that meant hot, and food was either not spicy or you know just hot. And so when I went to New Orleans, uh, my friend's sister said, no, no, you've got to try some of this stuff. So I remember uh, that's when blackened uh, redfish was a big deal, you know, uh, etouffee. I just started having all these great seasoned, amazing uh, um, Cajun cooking food. Uh. And the food was, uh, was amazing. So we all, everybody uh, had a great time and learned to kind of in, uh, enjoy a whole other food type. So that kind of set the way. Now I, you know, a lot more adventuresome. Now I try, uh, you know, Thai food goes, uh, I'm still a, a somewhat spice wimp, but um, it really taught me to enjoy spicy food. It opened up your palate. Again, yes, it was it an did. adventure yes, of cuisine, of libations, and really the yeah. whole culture is so far removed, I would imagine, from small town Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, it's it, it's quite an experience. It was very different. We even got to go to one of the private um, uh, Mardi Gras parties. I know they have a bunch of different parades and a bunch of different parties, and it, it was very different from living in Ohio. <laughs> Most <laughs> but definitely, but you had a good time. Uh, absolutely, and the people were amazing. I mean, everybody was so you know super friendly, uh, from my friend's sister to you know just strangers in the street. So everybody, it's a it's a great city. Absolutely. And again, now we're going to get down to the important part, the actual demonstrating of the making of the hurricane. And again... And the drinking. Yeah. Yes. Everybody's favorite part. Uh. And anyway, you're going to have to come on, Carrie, oh. because you're going to be Lovely. involved in this too, okay. including the um, drinking of the libation. <laughs> Perfect. But at any rate, I like, to, I like to use a shaker when I make uh, hurricanes. And what I do is I first, of course, add the ice. And Brian, I may have to um, press you into service and doing some breaking of this ice, which is solidifying a bit, if you don't mind. No problem, sure. Bust it up. And anyway, what I first do, and many of you have said that, well, you know, you free pour your drink, so we don't have a clue what you're doing. So I'll be kind, and I will use my um, top of my shaker as a little bit of a guideline. What I do first is I add the light rum about three quarters of the way up. And then after that, I add dark rum. And the same situation about three quarters of the way up the, the top of the shaker with this particular style of shaker. And then I add what is the defining ingredient of a hurricane, and that's the passion fruit infusion. And you can use passion fruit syrup, and you can use um, passion fruit nectar also. But ideally, this infusion is really the best of all. And I added about uh, maybe half. And then after that, we add orange juice, and again, to be kind, I fill the shaker top with it. And then after that, we add pineapple juice and uh, same scenario. Fill the shaker top to the top with it. Boy, I just barely made that. And then for colorfulness, and of course, this is traditional, you know, with uh, hurricanes, I add grenadine to give it that lovely crimson color. And then I do a couple of other things that typically are not really done in most establishments with a, a hurricane. I add a little bit of Rose's lime juice, and I add a little bit of coconut rum. And then I add the fresh lime. And typically what I do is I squeeze about half of a fresh lime in to begin with. And then I add another quarter, and I leave, once I'm done squeezing, the spent shell within the cocktail shaker. And then I shake it all up. And we're going to give Brian the Pat O'Brien glass. Excellent. Hey, it's big. It's man size. <laughs> and, and by the way, that, that glass is the original one that uh, from when I went to Mardi Gras 22 years ago. So I've, I've managed to keep it alive that long. So That is fabulous. And we're going to go ahead and dispense the contents of the shaker. 
And then we're going to add mm -hmm. a wheel, you know, of the of the lime, and one of these stubborn maraschino cherries that don't seem to want to come out. And you'll have to give that a try and oh, see what beautiful. you think. If I have to, I have to drink it. <laughs> Under penalty of death. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. And Carrie. I'm going to go ahead and give you this lovely pink hurricane style glass and I'm going to make yours now. And same procedure. I'm going to add the uh, ice to the shaker. And then we're going to go ahead and proceed and make another one here. And I'm going to have to remove the, the top, which tends to freeze on. And I, I love, I had never thought of using that before, but I, I love that you're using the shaker cap actually as the measurer. So that's, that's a nice uh, trick. A different sort of a trick. And you know, I think you were surprised. You only had my um, hurricanes basically about a year ago, and I think you were yeah. kind of surprised. Yeah, um, it was again at another uh, party. So I had a uh, Mardi Gras party, and we were having a Cajun cook and doing uh, drinks. And of course, we were going to have uh, hurricanes and so Ethel was kind enough to volunteer to uh, uh, make the hurricanes so I do remember it was getting close to the party and I think I called you on the phone and I said oh yeah I remember I need to get ingredients for the hurricane and so um, foolishly I was expecting there probably be rum maybe some fruit punch and a few other things and so <laughs> you can kind of see from the table and everything Ethel's just made that there's a lot of ingredients in it so she started running through the list and so at some point I finally had to say, okay, stop, I need to get a pen and paper. I was waiting for three <laughs> ingredients and I'm like, okay, there's way more than that. But of course, yeah, it's totally worth it. The results are amazing. So Because if you're going to make them right, you know, yeah. let's do it from scratch and let's do, again, justice to Louisiana and to the hurricane. And, and a lot of people at my party had had um, hurricanes before at different places and everybody was uh, amazed with your hurricanes. So yeah, they they're impressed everyone there. And that is cool. To me, I consider that a compliment that people really enjoyed them. Makes a big, big difference. And, yeah, of course, we have to add the juices, but, you know, let's put the important stuff in this time <laughs> around first. And again, I add my own little flourishes um, to produce a different sort of a hurricane, we'll say. And we're only missing one thing need a plate of like steamed crawfish right now. Oh, wouldn't that be, <laughs> be wonderful? <laughs> or jambalaya. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh. etouffee. Oh, that would be so wonderful. So oh. <laughs> Red beans and rice. <laughs> oh, we would be happy people. And again, traditionally, I like to, you know, put the spent shell in the drink. And adequate amounts of the fresh lime is critically important. We want that. And Carrie, it's almost happening. I know. It's <laughs> almost happening. You're almost there. I know. It's, just, it's uh, so great. I'm being nice. I'm only taking a few sips since you can't drink yet. So. Just, just really <laughs> Susie's being kind. <laughs> very, very kind. What can we say? Okay. Now, you will find that these shaker tops often do not cooperate. You have to kind of get forceful with them. <laughs> Oh, I spilled a bit of the um, lovely libation. Oh well, it's called alcohol abuse. You're abusing the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and Carrie, I'm sorry, but fingers were invented before forks. That is true. <laughs> and um, also you. the toothpicks. Cheers. And again, Cheers. you know, make sure that it is as it should be. And of course, I have to do my quality control here <laughs> to make sure that this is as it should it's be. Delicious. Isn't that I love Thank it. you. Thank I you. Love it. Very nice. Beautiful. Very nice. And again, an appropriate tribute to New Orleans. Yes. And again, I always emphasize this, but I think it's important to do so. It's fine to enjoy alcoholic beverages, but let's enjoy them in moderation and not overdue. Let's keep our community safe and let's keep it well spoken of. And again, this is another episode of Good Libations, and I'm Ethel Andrews. Thank you again. <laughs>